Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing, and today we're talking about LEGO 2K Drive. This is a little game that seemingly came out of nowhere, but it looked kind of cool, so we bought it and figured we'd check it out. So, uh, if you're looking for something light, or maybe you have younger siblings or children, maybe you're just like Lego obsessed, uh, this one might interest you. Now, there are two big sticking points, two cons, that do get in the way. Uh, two big negatives, I'll highlight later, but Otherwise, you got a straightforward good time here. Maybe you've been looking for something since the Forza Lego DLC collaboration thing, that was really good. Or even Lego Racers, or hey, maybe even Lego Island, maybe. I, I don't know how old you are. <laughs> anyway though, uh, this footage was captured on PS5 and is spoiler free. I, I mean like, yeah, there's nothing really to spoil. Sorry, I just get used to saying that. Uh, yeah, so LEGO 2K Drive is an arcade-style racer, meaning it's fast, it's accessible, it's easy to play with an emphasis on fun more than, like, technical, realistic racing skills. I've seen some people call it more of a kart racer, and I guess that works too. Uh, essentially, this is kind of like an all-ages thing. There's little bits here and there, like drifting and turning, that you need to master, but ultimately, it's good for picking up and playing with quick fun, and anyone can really learn it really fast. And it's great that the main core of the game, you know, the driving, it, it's really fun and simple. So vehicles can have different stats variations, but generally they're all super fast and easy to turn. Holding the left trigger actually allows you to do kind of like a drift, and the game is really, really generous with this drift. It, it, it's easy, so anyone can do it and anyone can drift for a long time. But it's still kind of satisfying, even if it doesn't impact the game too much. Just gives you a little finesse around bends, and it looks cool. Uh, also, hitting a face button is kind of like the handbrake. It allows you to do a hard right or left turn for sharp corners and if you just hold it you can spin around more. There's also a temporary boost meter that refills over time and this boost is awesome. The on-screen effect is cool and the sense of speed is pretty decent. Uh, if you crash too much pieces of your car will fly off like you will take damage but uh, you can crash into stuff like little objects in the environment like trees, garbage cans and stuff to get bricks that replenish your car. Now during races you can pick up items that give you little attacks like a Mario Kart or something like that and they're all super fast and like quick use. It's chaotic but some of the weapons feel good and also uh, there's a goddamn jump button, I forgot to mention that, that uh, makes things even crazier and like there are just near constant opportunities to hit jumps, go high flying, especially because uh, there's a little more nuance in the steering in the air and boosting at certain times. It's not like Rocket League level but there's some stuff there, it it's fun. The only thing that can be annoying is some pretty consistent AI rubber banding, it seems. I definitely noticed that. Not everyone cares about that stuff, but I do, so I figured I'd mention it. Now, what is awesome is that your vehicle adapts to whatever type of land you're on. So, if you go off-road, even just a little bit, your car can flip into a truck or a quad or whatever. Uh, maybe hit the water, and then your truck turns into a boat. It's always satisfying and cool, and the action keeps consistent. Like, even if sometimes in the open world I had a couple of moments where uh, there was a tiny transformation delay that cost me a crucial, like, half second when I drove off the road, that would only happen here or there. Like, most of the time, nine times out of ten, the transition is really smooth and satisfying. And in the races, it is absolutely thrilling and really cool. And you have control of not only your race car, but also what type of boat or what type of off-road vehicle to change into. There's customization across all of it, and it's really nice. And uh, speaking of the open world, the meat of the experience for most uh, is the career mode. So you set out as an amateur racer vying to win it all in this world of Bricklandia. Now, there's a rival racer at the top who is uh, pretty hilarious, actually, but uh, essentially you gotta defeat him and win the big sky race, but to do that, you need to work your way through circuits, traveling to different themed open worlds, collecting flags, winning, leveling up, and taking down specialized racers that have their own unique little personalities and tricks. Now, this game is like a, a, a dream for people with low attention spans. <laughs> Everything moves super quickly, like you are chaotically fast sometimes, maybe sometimes a little bit too much for your own good, but uh, the races are satisfying, sometimes challenging, and over very quickly. Everything is bite-sized, but everything is 
constant. They're kind of like these emergent, quick little open world missions that pop up that you just have to drive through to start. And they're quick, like little quick circuit races, collect-a-thons, dodging bombs, like a drift place, all little, again, quick bites. And they're all satisfying because they just keep you always moving, always doing, flying around the open world, collecting, racing, leveling up. You never really have to stop much, except for a couple of modes, like I say satisfying. Uh, some of the side mission types are a little bit more annoying actually, but I'd say like 80% of the types are good, short, and sweet fun. The open world chaos, believe it or not, reminds me of like the Simpsons hit and run for some weird reason. I don't know, like it, areas are colorful and creative and full of life and tons of objects to smash through, you know, little Lego civilians and garbage cans and everything just go flying through the air when you hit them. There's so much stuff going on screen visually, especially when you're in the city street areas or like the spooky areas later on. Like the variety is really good. There's all these visual effects. Bricks are exploding into a million smaller pieces. All of it can just be oddly visually satisfying, especially uh, when you're racing against like a weird pilot or a horse or a crazy alien. Uh, it's all surprisingly funny and just consistently entertaining with some good leveling up to unlock new races and car customization. Is it like the most compelling, skill-based, deep, thought-provoking game? No, not at all, but it's simple, good, clean fun. And you could do it all through couch co-op, which again, goes great if you have kids or a younger brother or sister or something, like you can have some legit good times and tackling some of those random open world missions together works well as a pair. Just nice stuff. Uh, there are other online options, but I, I think this is the most important of the additional features. Now, uh, not only are you leveling up and progressing alone or with someone, but you're also collecting parts and pieces and stickers and in-game cash currency to get more stuff. Uh, you take all this into builder mode, which is insane. I'd say if you're the creative builder type, this is a pretty big selling point. Uh, you can customize the cars you have and just add stuff on top of them or start completely from scratch and just build up your own unique thing. You know, cars, boats, trucks, abominations, <laughs> anything. I've already uh, seen people make some really cool stuff online, like recreating famous cars and stuff. I've seen people post on social media. There's a lot. Like I said in the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom video, I'm not the most creative builder type, but I just keep stacking stuff onto pre-existing cars mostly, and it was really satisfying. Pieces click together, it's fairly easy to move everything around, and the game gives you a ton of great tools, like uh, say grouping pieces together to either paint them all at once a certain color, or remove them all as one big chunk and place it somewhere else, or manipulate it, or flip it around. It all works pretty great. And even before earning any parts in the game, the game gives you a ton of brick styles to really start with, like to pretty much do everything or whatever you really want. It, it's staggering. It seems like right now you're only doing this for you. Like you're not sharing them in game online with others in like a marketplace or anything like that. Uh, you're, you're gonna be doing it because it's fun and satisfying and definitely for the Lego obsessed. So it is limited, I guess, in that sense. So be aware. Uh, now that does lead me to my big negatives. The first is that there are microtransactions. There's a whole store that lets you spend real world money to get converted into an in-game currency to buy more bricks to build. Now you can grind and earn most of this in game, but it's still a storefront there, like front and center, especially if you have kids that like don't care and will just click buy. Maybe be warned, uh, this is more of an issue with me personally because it's a $70 full priced game and a simple game at that. Like we don't really need to be nickeled and dimed here it, like this, it just, it just feels unnecessary. So if you're sensitive to this, it is absolutely worth noting. Ultimately like this whole thing, like it's, it's not new for publisher 2K to push this type of stuff. Like they have all kinds of problematic microtransactions in their sports games. And while drive like relax, it doesn't go anywhere near as hard as those. They're still here and it is lame. I don't like it. The other issue I have is what comes with the mileage, I guess. Uh, you might be able to crush this game in like seven hours or so. You can also spend like over 10, 15 collecting and doing everything. Uh, that's not really counting 
how much you're building stuff in the builder too. So it's, it's kind of all over the place. For some, it's gonna be a tough sell. I think if this makes you and your kid or whatever happy and you have hours of fun, it might still be worth it. But it's worth noting that after I spent a bunch of time in this game, I was still well aware of that $70 price tag here. Uh, the presentation is good. Uh, the cutscenes are great. The voice acting is good and funny. The music is good. The graphics are good, except for a couple of bugs here and there, but not a lot. The most important thing, all that crap aside, is that it is fun. It's just a simple game. Simple, but like, again, really fun. So that's where we're at. The price and the microtransaction thing might make me suggest waiting for a bit of a drop, but hey, that's a before you buy. You know how this works by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I wanna hear yours. We were just taking a quick look at this today, so uh, if you jumped in this weekend, if this was something you were looking forward to, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the microtransaction issues. Let me know what you think about the open worlds. What's your favorite world? And also, of course, I gotta ask, have you built anything cool in the game, like a Batmobile or a DeLorean or something like that? Creative type people, hit us up in the comments. We definitely wanna hear from you. But if you like this video, all you gotta do is click like. It helps us very much. We got you covered, so thank you. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. And of course, you also have to beat the undefeated. Never been caught cheating, but probably cheats all the time. Reigning champion and obvious bad guy. Shadow Z! That's me! Shadow Z! Oh, I'm gonna smash you good for being a no-name nobody who suddenly had threats at me for no apparent reason! <laughs> All right, Z, hit the bricks! <laughs> That's Clutch Racington! Ex big shot driver, now charismatic miner who trains rookie racers, which is lucky for you and convenient for the story. We, we smell, smell a dude.